roll it. Like. Now I gotta make a thousand more of these. Okay. Today's class is all about paper quilling. Hey class, welcome back, Mr. G here. Today, we're gonna to be talking about paper quilling and getting into a whole new project. All right, diving into paper quilling. So today we're gonna to be working on a letter design. I did mine off of, you know, the G. Why? Because that's what I do. Now for this project, materials that you guys are gonna need are really basic things. Magazines, a little bit of a metal coat hanger, that's what I'm using, some glue, and some cardboard. That's all you need for today's project. All right, first things first. For paper quilling, if you wanna do watercolored paper, watercolor up some paper and then cut it into strips, perfectly usable stuff. Me, I'm gonna go simple and we're just gonna use some magazines because I have a stack of magazines. So we're just gonna shred those out to get our magazine pieces for today's lesson. Now for this piece, you can always use a trusted X-Acto knife and a ruler and cut your strips that way. Me, I've got a paper shredder, so I'm gonna be using that. Other good tips are gonna be if you guys have a pasta cutter and you can feed the papers through there and cut it into the ribbons like a nice fat fettuccine or a linguine if you wanna do a little more shorter piece. Uh, those all work just fine. I'm using the paper shredder because it's, it's way faster. Now moving into those strips, if you're using a paper cutter, find a paper cutter that's gonna cut those nice ribbons out of the pieces so that you saw that as it cuts through, it cuts in those nice ribbon patterns. Some paper shredders are cross cuts. So you'll get this like confetti mesh stuff and that's not what you want for this thing. Now, if you haven't got either one of those things, another option is a slide paper cutter. If you can get one of these, they're like 10 bucks or so, I think at Office Depot, Walmart, any of those places, you just lift up the page, take your page, slide it in, and you wanna get that nice, get your little strip. Um, this works fine, it takes a few more minutes. Um, you can usually cut three-ish pieces of paper with this, so it'll take, you know, less time than doing it by hand with a just a straight up X-Acto knife, but uh, this works really well too. Now, tools, is gonna be a second video, so stay tuned for that. I am gonna be making a tools video so that you guys can make uh, DIY tools for this project that don't cost any money and it's stuff you got around the house. Now onto the quilling process itself. So as you're doing the quilling process, you're taking a piece of the magazine and you're winding it around. Like for this, I'm using a wire piece off of a coat hanger and I'm just winding it around there just to create those coil pieces. Now once I've created several of these, now you can either A, glue the ends together so that they create that nice little um, round piece it works fine or you can just set them off to the side and then glue it later i took a lot of my liberties and glued them later and glued them into the piece itself because it was just easier so i mean don't think it like if you don't do it this way you did it no you can do it kind of however it works uh sometimes if you're going to form the pieces into shapes they got stars they have squares triangles teardrop also all sorts of stuff add that in right when you're building it by all means, that's when it needs to be done because it takes time for that glue to dry. You need that glue to set up and not inside the piece. Uh, it be a little more hazardous that way. Now, first things first, when you're getting into paper quilling, you need to do some sketches. What are the sketches for? The sketches are gonna be for what kind of pieces are you trying to build? Now, the shapes that you're trying to build in the quilling pieces, you gotta go ahead and sketch a few of those out. Why? So you got a little bit of a game plan. You don't wanna just go in this blind. Never a good thing. Also, because we're doing a letter design, I'm doing several different designs of the G that I'm that I normally do. Now, granted, I'm gonna stick with uh, the universal symbol. Why? Because that's my thing. Key point: marketing. There's this. It everything ties together. That's the number one reason for the students. Make sure that you're doing a uppercase and a lowercase, and just kind of play around with the designs. Is more things that you can try and get some experience with the better uh then i did a 3d mock-up of how this is going to be so i can start gauging the depth of my wall uh which we'll be going into next now once you've sketched those designs again you're building those pieces out making those little quilling bits and kind of keeping them uh off to the side for me i use a little baggie to store my all mine in uh, you're gonna be making a bunch of these so they don't go away just you know throw them in a baggie nice good storage next building the frame now building the frame you're gonna go ahead and cut strips out of cardboard now for me i first designed a base which is putting the g design and then using strips out of the same cardboard box i was just using a cereal box to make the wall pattern going around the shape of the g now after i did this i realized this wall is a bit too high so i cut that thing in half if you're doing that go ahead and figure out how tall your quilling pieces are because you want them to kind of sit around the same height as the wall uh, just because that'll look the best. Uh, if it's a little shorter than the wall, that's fine. You give it a little more of a concave effect. A little taller than the wall, convex. There's your science term for the day. 
Now for me, because I knew how I was gonna be putting in these pieces, I went ahead and spray painted the entire base form itself. Uh, gave, gave myself a nice flat color palette to work with. So as I'm adding in the pieces, because I'm using uh, some old Newsweeks, they have a lot of black and white structure to them, a lot of uh, just the papers, white, black text, black and white images. So I'm getting a lot of stark, stark black and white. So I wanted this nice uh, spatial dark blue, dark navy, a little bit of white spray paint on the top of there too, just to kind of balance out the color palette. That just looked cool to me. Once I've started putting in my pieces, again, putting down a layer of glue just to hold the pieces down in there and just kind of moving the uh, moving the pieces around with a little bit of the glue. Quick tip, use chopsticks, or if you got those like long chef tweezers, those things work great too. Why? Because it's uh, hard, especially for me, like with the meat paw, I got issues trying to put, yeah, it was difficult. So chopsticks was way easier. Now, after you put those in there, a little bit of glue at the bottom, they're going to, now it's going to go ahead and start setting up. So it's going to hold those pieces in there nice and nice and stiff. Try and marry in as many other pieces as you possibly can. You want to fill up that entire space. You don't want to have an open amount of space, uh, mainly because the positive and negative space that we're dealing with, you want to try and emphasize the filling of the negative space with those positive elements. The positive elements on here are the paper quilling pieces. Last thing that I did just to finish my design off i use a little bit of nail polish uh just to finish off with a color palette so i had this uh really funky octagon teal glitter design stuff start paint pushing that over the top surface use a little bit of silver just to go around the outside edge where i had to cut and so i don't have that fresh spray paint look anymore i could spray paint again however i didn't because i already started gluing some pieces in there so i finished that off with a little bit of the some silver nail polish and the final result I think this thing looks pretty good. Okay, so uh, I might have to hang this up as the as the new backdrop here, just because I think that that it's nice. It's it's uh, handy. I uh, love the blue. A little bit of a flashy. Looks good. Assignment is sketches, paper quilling, build your piece up, and uh, and paint it. And then take lots of pictures. Post them. Love to see this stuff on Instagram. Don't forget to tag me on Instagram if you if you made some cool stuff. I always look to love to see what fun stuff my classmates have made. As always, uh, let's go ahead and wrap up the assignment as we do. Uh, one first, I hope that you got something really good out of the class today. As always, we're trying to make these uh, fun, interesting videos again. Most of us are at home, virtual teaching, virtual learning. So. We're all working on this together. Finish up the homework as always. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share on all those various platforms, trying to get the message out there to as many teachers and students as possibly can make our lives easier in the virtual environment. As always, if you have a question, comment, or concern, don't forget to raise those hands down in the comments below. Happy to answer those questions. I got a couple I got to touch base with again from last week's video. Uh, as always, I will see you guys next class. So until then, later guys. Make smart. Yeah, I used the frozen. What well, the cereal was kind of blah. It wasn't great, you know. It's like Lucky Charms. Not yeah, it's like Lucky Charms, but way less marshmallows and way more um kind of like kicks. Remember the kicks back in the day? That takes me back. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>